Hi everybody, today we look at Unreal NPC AI. So we built a behavior tree for queuing actually. That is what we want to build. We want to have a kind of queue actor and a couple of NPCs are very nicely queuing on it. Yeah, very orderly. And they're waiting there, um, getting something from the queue actor. I think it's a, it's a kind of colored box. They will bring that box to a drop point, um, drop it there and then they will queue back on and so on and so on. So what we really want to do, we look at behavior trees, we look at very simple pathfinding, we look at the logic to build that queue and to kind of close that queue. We will spawn a couple of actors here in the level, like you see here, and then everybody going back to queuing and yeah, transporting more colored boxes, kind of. The interesting thing I think is how to use these behavior trees for the whole thing how to make this queue logic really deciding if somebody's really queuing directly on this queue actor or if there's a gap in the queue that I have to close and yeah, thinking about what the queue actually is, what kind of vectors are in used here and how to model the whole thing. And then we look a bit at pathfinding in Unreal and how that can be optimized and so on and so on. We have the project here, it's in the web as always, you can download it and play around. It's called queue and carry. We have a couple of things here, mostly starting with navigation things. We have the NAV mesh bounce volume and we have the NAV modifier volume. The NAV mesh bounce is actually the whole, um, is, is a volume kind of including the whole level. And the NAV modifier volume is a volume that defines navigation resolution in a certain area. Here the NAV mesh resolution is high around my queuing actor, simply because I of course want to have very fine grained navigation around it. It's not that important in the rest of the level. You go to the project settings and here you go to navigation, no, not system, but navigation mesh. And if you scroll down here, you have the definition what the resolution is for your low default and high um, resolutions. The whole thing should be, um, yeah, actually, Around this here, I have 40 for low, 20 for defaults, and cell size for um, five in the, in the very high grained navigation. But it's quite compute intensive, so don't overdo it. Um, just make sure that you have everything that is important. You have a very low or a very high resolution here. You can switch the um, navigation information with pressing P, and then you see this green here. And that is something that's quite important because otherwise you will not be able to really navigate to it and they will not actually find your targets. Yeah, not even this mesh will be found, this actor, if it's not a high resolution around it. Other thing is, um, you see this arrow here, that's actually our queue, where this queue will be built. And yeah, the moment I really um, rotate it around, you see that the queue is now looking in that direction. And again, the, the, the NPCs are running to the queue actor, they get their position, they try to queue very orderly, and then they are waiting to drop their boxes. So let's put it back. The red indicator is that navigation in this pane is actually being rebuilt. Let's look at the queue actor itself. It's very simple. It's just a, queue. It's a, it's a cylinder and an arrow indicating the kind of forward vector. And first thing is we want to register in the queue. Registration means that every NPC is giving its name and its location. And then that is stored in a couple of arrays. It would be actually nicer to do that in a queue with struct, I, but I want to stick to blueprints. So we do it in two arrays that need to be synchronized manually. And we have here the actor names and the actor positions and kind of the number in the queue. So every new actor gets a position either there in the front of the queue, if it's the first or they are somewhere later in the queue. And then we really have to calculate what does that mean. The first one obviously is standing at the beginning of the array, so very near. Everybody else is to be positioned a bit later, a bit farther away, but in the very same direction, so very same forward vector. It will return your queue location and the position in the queue, and you have to then, um, the NPC has to really translate that into a defined position where to go for. Other thing is when I leave the queue, of course, I need to deregister. So I have to tell them that my um, name will not be stored anymore in my queue. That, that makes a break, gives a hole in the queue and that needs to be closed by the one NPC behind me so that the queue is always kind of orderly. 
So that's the Q actor already. Then let's have a look at the overall structure here. We have the blueprints. Yeah, that's really just the cube and the Q actor. We have a couple of materials to make it more colorful. The mesh is just the static mesh that's kind of stolen from the, from the starting level. And we have these many, many tasks or a handful of tasks actually that are coming from the behavior tree. The behavior tree is one of the AI actors. So we have the blackboard for variables, we have the AI controller class, and we have the behavior tree itself. The controller, the AI controller is very, very simple. It just has this one function on process. So if the NPC gets active, it wants to run a behavior tree. And in this case, it's my BT, Q and carry behavior tree. That's all that it is there. Let's look at the reference, then you see how it's actually used. You see that your NPC needs to refer to the AI controller and it does that in the class defaults. If you filter for controller here, you will see that you have the AI controller class. And that is exactly the controller class that we saw and that will then point to your behavior tree. That's the only setup really that you need. So that is that, we can close that. More important, what is actually the behavior tree and how to do that because that is defining the logic of your NPC. The behavior tree is actually a tree structure and that is coupled with a blackboard. The blackboard is there to store your uh, variables um, and the variables normally are used to steer the tree that is active in your tree. And other than, other than that, we have three different trees here. We have the move, move to queue actor, we have the queue at queue actor, and we have the Dropbox thing. And everything is really composed um, with different tasks that are then there in a certain order. The tasks are the magenta ones, and the blue ones are conditions that you want to add. And if I open one of these tasks, I always have this receive execute AI. And here in this example, for example, I just store a reference to the Q actor and I can react to arrows, for example, if I don't find anything, or I can actually yeah, take the Q actor, put it into a variable. You see this here, get value as object from the blackboard as a function or the set value as object. There's also a set value, a set value as bool or string and so on and so on. And that is how you really store or get variables into the blackboard. It's always triggered by a text name. So you have to provide the name of the variables. And if you go here to the blackboard, you see exactly that. There are a couple of keys and you have to provide the key name and can set the variable from there. And then at the end, you do a finish execute either with success or not, or if something really horrible happens, you say a finish abort. And if you have a successful execute, the next task in the row here with the numbers will be executed as long as a certain condition is set or not set. In this case, this near queue is not set. As long as this is, this is not set, this whole tree will trigger. This whole branch will trigger. And of course, the last task in the branch will actually set that so that this branch is finished and will not be opened again. And the whole thing will jump to the next one. That is this queue at queue actor. It also has a couple of conditions. One thing is, is near queue is set and stop queuing is not set. And naturally, at the very end of the whole branch, this stop queuing will be set and then it moves again to the next branch and so on and so on. The tasks here, either some of them are predefined, some of them you really have to define yourself. They are always have the same approach. You have this event receive execute AI, and then you can really do what you want in here, what you need to do. You can call functions from other things, but you have to end at the end of the thing with this uh, finish and a success message there. Here you see the logic to really get the position that you want to have. Either you are, you are in the front, then nothing changes. But if you're not in the front, you really have to look what is the position in front of you and how far away from that position you want to be. You have this Q length multiplier that defines how far away you are from the front then. And then you can again give back that result. So this, this vector logic is a bit yeah, tricky, but not really. It's really looking what is the direction of this array and how far away do I want to be from the middle point? That's it more or less. Then we have these two drop actors. These are just static messages actually. Finding them um, is done via tag. So if you filter here by tags, you see it has a tag drop. So we go through 
all the actors in the level, look for the ones that has this tag drop, um, then um, randomly select one of them, make that the drop the drop point for this NPC, and that will be then used to carry the box to it and drop it there, meaning spawning it actually there and making it invisible on the backpack. So that is exactly then what you will see. And let's also have a look in parallel on the behavior tree. So you see here the NPC that is shown already triggers the is near queue and it then goes to the next branch. It's queuing and finding its position in the queue at the queue actor. Then at one point it will randomly trigger to make this box carrying tree and it will run to one of the drop points. It will then drop the box and come back here always def depending on certain variables that will be set in the blackboard. That is exactly what you see here. And then you have this catch all wait, meaning if no branch is activated for whatever reason, it just waits and tries the whole thing again. Other than that, it will always go through the numbers. You can really shift them around and the numbers will change. And um, the moment one task is finished with a success, the next task will be triggered. That's it more or less. Good. Looking at this, it's kind of simple. Of course, it gets ugly very, very fast, depending on the complexity that you have. It's always a kind of balance. What do you put in a task? What do you put into the tree logic? And yeah, really where to store the logic um, to make it as easy as possible. Good. Let's look at these things. We have the decorators. These are the conditions. The condition is valid in this case for the whole branch. And you also can set it to condition for a certain task. There are a couple of predefined um, decorators for the conditions. You can also do your own one. Services are parallel tasks that are kind of tested on the full branch in parallel the whole time and can also set conditions to make that happen. So kind of quick and dirty a bit but I think it's a nice start for AI. I hope that helps and see you soon. Bye.